From Niantic, Connecticut, Mary Gordon, reading from her honorable mention short story, The Meal. Thank you. I'm going to read just a couple of pages from the beginning of this story. In this story, two former IRA fighters, oh, okay, thank you. Two former IRA fighters with unfinished business between them meet unexpectedly in the States after 20 years. Get away from that window, old man. The voice was deep and close behind Liam Donnelly. He let the drape slip spun tight-fisted and launched a right uppercut. The intruder took it on the forearm and stepped back with a dancer's grace. Liam's gnarly left paw was on its way to his opponent's midsection. The fellow dodged the jab, and Liam was carried forward on his own momentum. He was about to kiss the floor when his assailant caught him by the bib straps, pulled him upright, and corralled his flailing arms. God damn it, Liam, it's me, Tommy McKeon. Liam took in the thug who called himself McKeon, the yellow slicker and muddy boots pulled over jeans. You don't look like Tommy McKeon, but you come up quiet on a man like he did. McKeon let go of, of Liam and stepped back. Jesus, I thought you'd be an old geezer. I am a geezer, Liam growled. You might have given me a heart attack. McKeon tossed his slicker over a chair. You still got the instincts. What brings you here without so much as a tap on the door, Liam asked. McKeon crossed to the window and lifted an edge of curtain. His broad, muscular back, firm against his black tee, stirred Liam's memory of McKeon at another window, Annie at his back, her arms tight around him. Drumming up funds in Boston, McKeon said, decided to stay. I don't give a tinker's damn why you're in the States. Why are you in my house? Somebody's after me. Have you not heard? It's the new millennium. The troubles are over and done. For some, McKeon said. I heard you hitched up with the last ditch provost, Liam said in a, heavy to in a tone of heavy scorn. It's not the provost after me, McKeon said. Might it be leprechauns? Ignoring McKeon's dour look, Liam dropped into his overstuffed rocker. He drew a pinch of rich, dark flakes from a tobacco tin and spread them on a paper. With his quarter bent Dublin cupped in his hand, he ran a pipe cleaner down the stem, tapped the dottle into an ashtray, and blew out the leftover ash before he filled the bowl, a pipe lighting ritual handed from father to son, his only sacrament. With his pipe tamped and lit, Liam perused the newspaper, bided his time with the smoking, and pretended the dark figure from his past was not in the room. Done with his smoke, Liam dropped his Irish times and snuffed his pipe. Tobacco piqued his appetite. He was hungry. Across the wide room, McKeon crimped the curtain to allow a scan of the yard and road beyond without pe being seen. McKeon was precise about such things. Liam noticed how deftly the big man's fingers curled around the worn fabric, the baby finger crooked out to the side daintily as if balancing a fine china teacup. Was that how McKeon held the knife before he slid it across someone's throat? Thank you. Thank you.